I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a feature wall that can protect your lungs. Today we're back at the office and we're still in the process of getting this place to look like we want it to but also act like we want it to. And today we're going to do a project that takes care of some of both of those things. This room has our CNC and our laser in it and we have dust extraction, dust collection, we have all that stuff in place but still the air in here can get kind of nasty. So today we're going to set up something that can check the air quality in this room and then let us know how that quality is outside this room. So on this outside wall, we're going to be putting a big feature, something that looks really cool, but when these doors are shut, it's actually also going to indicate the air quality that's inside the room. We're going to use an Arduino with a dust sensor and some LEDs to make that happen, but first, we've got to make something that can cover this entire wall. We're going to do that with foam and MDF. You've probably seen on Pinterest or other places where people will decorate a wall by adding strips of wood to it to make it geometric and give it depth. But we want to do something a little bit more us, and we actually want to make it look like there are kind of grooves or circuits cut into the wall. Now to do that without damaging the wall, we're actually going to build some panels and stack them on top of the wall and put gaps in between the panels so you've got some depth. We're going to do this with sheets of MDF that's really thin. We're going to use a laser and a CNC to cut it, but you could totally use regular woodworking tools. And then once we've got all those panels done, we're going to back them with this half inch foam. This is going to act as a standoff off of the existing wall. So I designed the room in Fusion 360 so that whenever I made these panels, I could take that design, I could send it out to our laser cutter, I could also send it out to our CNC. And if you want to, you could 3D print this entire thing at scale just to show other people. So with the LEDs going around the door trim, we were worried that the light wouldn't be able to travel down some of the circuits. So I was able to kind of mimic an LED strip around the door and then go into the render environment and see how far that light would travel down the channels. Now that we can see that the light from the LED scatters through those channels like we're liking, we can send it out to the CNC and we can get cutting. Josh got all of the rest of these pieces cut and we've got them laid out on the floor. And so now we can see what this whole thing is gonna look like and it's gonna be super cool. Next up, we need to offset these pieces from the wall. I went ahead and put a mark on the front of them so I know which way should be facing out. We've gotta trace this onto the foam panels that I talked about earlier and we're gonna cut those out. But cutting that foam cleanly is actually taking a little bit of experimentation. Let me show you what I figured out. So I traced the outside of some of these pieces and basically we're gonna be cutting in from that line. So we're gonna make another offset line and cut that one so that the foam kind of hides away behind the piece. But in testing cutting this foam, I actually found that my maker knife, a normal utility blade, does a pretty terrible job of cutting it cleanly. Now the best way to cut this and the cleanest way to cut it would be with a hot wire cutter but I don't have time to make one and I don't have time to buy one. So I looked at some other options. Using a long utility blade like this gives a really, really nice clean cut because you can have big saw marks, but it's pretty slow and you have to sharpen this thing a lot. So I also tested a jigsaw and it worked about the same as this thing, but this is much faster and you can get a nice uh, long cut with it. So we're gonna use this multi-tool with a really fine tooth blade on it. It buzzes right through this stuff and it's a clean enough cut that will work. We got all the foam cut out and it actually went really quickly. Part of that is because you don't have to be very exact because you're not gonna see it. But in the process of laying all those pieces of foam out underneath these pieces of MDF, we realized that it actually looks kind of cool for them not to all be offset from the wall. So we cut foam for some of them and not for some of them. And I think it's gonna add an extra level of depth. But now that we've got them all cut, we just need to hot glue the foam on the back of the MDF. And then we have a whole lot of painting to do. Also, because I know somebody's gonna ask, why didn't we just see and see the foam like we did the wood? Well, you absolutely could, except that we didn't want to spend the time to figure out which bit to use on foam. And honestly, it cuts so easily and so quickly that it would have probably taken more time to make the cut paths and get it on the CNC and all that stuff. So you, you could, 
but we didn't. So we're gonna use hot glue to put these two things together. We thought about using spray adhesive, but I think it's just gonna be messier and probably not necessary. Plus, once you get these things glued together, they're gonna be attached to the wall with brad nails. So we've got inch and a quarter brad nails that are gonna be able to go through both of these layers and through the drywall, just barely, and that should be enough to kind of sandwich everything together. So the glue is doing part of the work, but not all of it. So we chose a high temp glue gun for this because the high temp glue has a little bit stronger bond and it's great for putting two different types of materials together. You could use any glue gun, but since we're gonna be leaning just on glue and some brad nails for this, any strength we can get is helpful. I've got all of the foam glued on the back of these pieces, and so now we're ready to start painting them, but before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and prep the wall. We need to take off this trim that's around the door because we're gonna be replacing that with some other trim where we can hide some LEDs. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this off the wall and then make sure that we have everything that's gonna fit around the door frame before we start attaching it. Just a little tip for you, if you're gonna be taking down any trim, baseboards, door frames, anything that's been painted, take a blade and go down through where the connection is between the wall and the trim and it's gonna cut through the paint to make sure that when you pull it off the wall, you're not gonna end up pulling away the paint or the drywall. tip for you, if you're putting up baseboards or trim in your house, don't use glue. Use brad nails. This piece was actually glued, and you can see a little bit of yellow, like wood glue or something. This was glued to the drywall, and when I took it out, I took a bunch of drywall with it, and that's going to be a pain in the butt to fix now. The reason that we took this off is because we're going to make a new door frame that goes around it that's going to hide some LEDs. And I don't think we've talked about this yet, but the whole purpose of this is to make the surround of this door an indicator of the air quality inside that room. So we're gonna use some basic electronics. We're gonna put an air quality sensor inside the room that's gonna be measuring all the time. And when it gets to a level that will mark as dangerous, it will change the color of the LEDs on the outside of the room that will spread into our circuit pattern. And from out here, you'll be able to tell that you need to stay out of this room until the air is cleared. So real quickly, let's go look at the electronics because there's not a whole lot to it. We're gonna start with an Arduino Uno, and that's gonna be checking the values that come from this air quality sensor. This is just to check the particulate count in the air. So it's looking for things like smoke, sawdust, anything that's airborne. And based on this value that comes back, we'll look up kind of a chart of what's safe and what's not. And then we can have different levels of air quality. We can show those levels with the LED strips based on the color that they're showing. And so we're gonna wrap these LEDs around the door frame. And another thing to point out is that with a whole lot of LEDs, you have to have a separate power source. So we've got a power brick here that will just be feeding power to the LEDs to make sure that they're bright enough for us to see in the room. So those LEDs are gonna be mounted right here, but all of the electronics need to be mounted inside this room. We're gonna mount this sensor and the Arduino in a little box up here to make sure that it's getting airflow just from this room for testing. Now, just wanna point out that we have done a lot in this room to try to make the air as safe as possible. We've got HEPA filters, we've got all the filtration on the lasers, we've got an air cleaner on the ceiling, we have dust collection. This is a last resort, just to make sure that if one of those things fails or is not doing as good a job as it needs to, we'll know. If adding stuff like this to an otherwise just aesthetic project seems overwhelming to you, don't worry. This stuff is not really that hard. You may just not understand it. We've got lots of videos that kind of walk you through getting started with this stuff, and we've got code examples that you can check out. So don't let this stop you from doing a bigger project. So now we've got to take all these pieces outside and spray them with the paint sprayer, let them dry, and then we can finally start getting them on the wall. We're gonna use these spacers to add gaps in between the pieces, but I think we're also gonna use these spacers to get started. So we're gonna put these around the door frame that we just added, and then start to work the pieces off of the corners of that door frame. And I think once we get that gap around the door correct, everything else should kind of fall into place.
We've got all the pieces on the wall and it's looking really cool, but before we paint them, I'm gonna go ahead and take this trim off, get the LEDs in, poke the hole in the wall to feed the wires through, and then we'll actually start finishing this thing up. Painting. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe, which is awesome because we really like them around here. They offer a fantastic security system that you can build custom for your home or your business. So maybe you have a leaky water heater. You can get a water sensor that keeps an eye on that. Maybe you've got kids that like to go out the back door where the pool is. You've got door sensors that can let you know whenever that door opens or closes. They've also got glass break sensors, motion sensors, smoke detectors, and you can pick out all the items that you need for your home to customize your system when you order it on the website. So what you do is you go to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS, build out the system, and then they send it to you in a box. It takes about 30 minutes to set the whole thing up. It's incredibly easy. And then you can set up the interactive monitoring for about a dollar a day. The monitoring works like this. If your system is armed, Simply safe on. And any of those sensors are tripped. It will let you know through the app, plus it'll alert the authorities right away. We're big fans of Simply Safe around here, and we think you will be too. So go to simplysafe.com slash ILTMS. That's gonna get you 20% off your system, plus a free month of interactive monitoring once you sign up. Thanks again to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. The wires that are going through the wall are going to be attached to this Arduino, and so is this optical dust sensor. This has a hole in it, and inside this little box, it's actually using light to measure the kind of cloudiness of the air. That gives us a value that we can equate to good air quality, bad air quality, whatever, and then based on those values, we can turn the LEDs different colors on the outside of the room. So I've been running this in this clean room for quite a while, so I've got kind of a baseline of values, and now we're going to use a match just to make sure that it's measuring what it should be measuring. That worked out really well. So now we have the baseline, we have a value for smoke in the room for the laser. We'll also have to do a test with some dust in the air with CNC running just so we have those numbers and then we can create our warning lights based on all those values. But I do wanna point out that all these measurements are gonna be after the machines are already handled. So we've got a dust collector on the CNC, we have fume extractors on the laser. So really we're measuring after that point just to make sure that those systems don't fail. But next up, we need to put this thing in a box and get it mounted on the wall. Uh, so apparently I shot a brad nail right through the middle of an LED and it exploded. And so the lights work up to that point and then they stop. And so I have to cut out one little, maybe one inch section and jump over the LED that I exploded. Is this the part when people say that they like it when we keep the mistake? <laughs> I guess so, I hope so. Hope it's fun for you, it's not fun for me. Our test here showed that the system did exactly what we wanted it to do, which is awesome, but it also showed that the filtration inside the room is working as it should. It was able to clean out all of that dirty air, and that shows us that the working environment in there is safe when those systems are running. This thing out here is just a fail safe in case something gets clogged inside the room. Now we're gonna have links to the sensors and the code and all the things you need down in the description if you wanna make one of these for your shop. But even if you don't wanna make the sensor part, this wall looks super cool and it's very easy to put together. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may wanna check out and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Now this thing proves, this, this thing, this, pr our test, our test here proves, ow, this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not prepared. Our test here totally showed, totally, to totally, sh totally showed. Our test here totally proved that the system did what we wanted it to do, to, 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 to